How much RAM do you really need to run Linux Mint? Today we'll go from 8GB of RAM all the way down to 256MB of RAM. That's gonna be very fun. These are the system specifications I'm going to be using for this video. I have also turned off swap on Linux Mint so that we are running purely off of RAM. We are now on 8GB of RAM, as can be seen on the system monitor. This is a pretty standard setup. Everything on the system works just fine and there's not much to talk about here. So let's drop it down to 4GB of RAM. System monitor. We have swap disabled and we are on 4GB of RAM. So let's say I wanna browse the internet and I wanna draw at the same time. I wanna compress something. I want to use LibreOffice, the software manager, to install new applications. And I also want... what else? Draw in LibreOffice. It has gone up to 68%. And let's say that we need a lot of Mozilla Firefox tabs. We, we really... The CPU is going crazy, of course, and the RAM was almost full. I proceeded to open even more Mozilla Firefox tabs. The RAM usage was 97.5%. Yet, the system was still really functional. We can still draw, kind of. It's laggy, of course, but you can draw. The more programs we open from this point onward, the more it feels like walking on thin ice. However, right after that, one more Mozilla Firefox tab opened, and that has caused the system to freeze. Now Linux Mint is done, and it doesn't work anymore. I also could not shut it down. I had to force quit. But now, let's drop it down to 2GB of RAM. We can see that we are on 2GB of RAM in the system monitor. Let's just go ahead and open programs. So we have a bunch of Firefox tabs open. Let's open up more. LibreOffice Draw. Impress. Linux impresses me. It doesn't seem like there's much different effect from 4 gigabytes. It's just that the RAM fills up faster. I soon realized that our system has froze up. This time much sooner. So I guess now we have to drop it down to 1GB of RAM. We see the cursor, but there's nothing else. Wait a second, what is this? After some time, the system just throws us into the login screen. If we log in, there's again the black screen. I'm guessing this is because with 1GB of RAM, it's not enough to load the Cinnamon graphical environment, especially with no swap enabled. So it just fails and throws us into the login screen. But at least we can still access the terminal. When trying to log in, I got an error. Eventually I got in. As we can see, we are on 1GB of RAM. So this is the best we can do with purely just 1GB of RAM. I decided to turn on swap from this point on and see if that makes it any better. Now we are booting up to 1GB of RAM plus swap and this time it works. As we can see in the system monitor, we have swap enabled and memory usage is almost full even when doing nothing. What can we even open? It can handle a few Firefox tabs maybe. On top of like three Firefox tabs, and the system monitor, I opened LibreOffice and one more application. That was the breaking point. Linux Mint is now frozen and we cannot do anything anymore. But now, let's try booting up with 512 megabytes of RAM with swap turned on. We quickly find out that the graphical environment cannot load either, so we have to use the terminal. This one still works and we can see that we have 512 megabytes of RAM. I guess there's not much else we can do here. Last but not least, what if we were to try to boot with 256 megabytes of RAM with swap enabled? When I try to start the system, we are immediately taken to the bootloader menu. If I try to boot, we soon find find out that the bootloader can't even load the kernel at this low RAM. If I try advanced options and starting from there, we get an error that the CPU has been disabled by the guest operating system. So Linux Mint Cinnamon cannot start with this low RAM. Check out this video on how macOS handled this experiment. And I'll be back.